This flea can read the king's mind and bounces back and forth between his left and right hands according to his instructions. The king becomes so attracted to the flea that he soon ignores his daughter, Violet, who is singing and playing for him. He gives her a perfunctory round of applause and walks away, leaving Violet in a state of disbelief. Once back in his room, he pricks his finger with a quill and feeds his blood to the little flea. He also provides the flea with a cushiony glass box as a nest. The king becomes so obsessed with the flea that he takes his mind off the affairs of state and the world. In a few days, the flea has grown to the size of a pea. Even when he is informed that the people have no money and are starving to death, he feels it is more urgent to make a toy for the flea. He is patient enough to stare at the flea playing with his handmade toy, but not interested in knowing what his love-struck daughter is thinking. Violet could only spend her days with the maid of honor, asking her to read out chivalric romances. And the queen her arms extends, and to her breast his head she bends, and on the bed in warm embrace. In Violet's fantasies, she has been in love with the man of her dreams for more than a dozen summers, until the day she asks the king to find her a husband when she is no longer willing to endure the loneliness. She complains that her heart will only die if she stays within these walls. So she wants to marry a brave, strong, handsome man like the courteous knights in romantic novels. The king promises to find her a perfect husband, but he doesn't want his only daughter to leave him, even though he doesn't care about her and spends his days playing with a flea. When he sees that Violet refuses to eat the undercooked, bloody steak, the king immediately slips into the room with the steak. He whispers and searches for his pet flea. Then a flea with six tentacles bigger than a dog creeps out from under the bed and greedily eats the raw meat. Although the king could provide the best conditions for his precious pet, he could not prevent it from growing old and dying. After a while, the king wakes the doctor from his sleep in the middle of the night and drags him to his room. It turns out that the flea is sick and moaning in pain. The doctor is startled by a beast the size of a sheep. The king anxiously pleads with the doctor to save it. But before the doctor has time to do anything, the flea lets out a squeal and loses its breath. Instead of living a long life, the lavish meals cause him to develop high blood pressure and diabetes. The grief-stricken king suddenly regains a semblance of sanity. He warns the doctor not to tell anyone about the flea, or he will make him bury the flea with him. After losing his pet flea, the king finally remembers that he has a good daughter. He sends Violet some beautiful dresses to wear as her wedding gown. Longing for marriage, Violet excitedly asks her father who he's marrying her to. To her bewilderment, the king hasn't chosen a husband for her at all. He decides to hold a tournament to discover the princess's husband, just like the great characters in the novels. This makes Violet's joy turn to sorrow, for she fears that the winner may not be the brave, wise knight she prefers. Little does she know that this is exactly the way her father wants to keep her on his side, for he has prepared a test that no suitor can win. Whoever can guess from which beast this huge skin was stripped will marry the princess. The man first touches the material of the skin, then pulls a hair from the vein-covered hide. He answers with confidence that it is a sow's hide. With a wave of his hand, the king declares him eliminated. A serious man approaches the huge hide and examines it with a magnifying glass. He believes it to be the skin of a rare boar. The king laughs and denies it, mocking his accent. Princess Violet breathes a sigh of relief because she doesn't want to marry such an old, stubborn man. The next young man in line to answer the question makes Violet's heart swell with excitement. Violet wants to marry one of these handsome knight-errant types. So she calls a halt to the game and curiously asks her father what kind of animal that strange skin belongs to. The king speaks proudly of his pet flea. When the giant flea died, he skinned it and hung it up. Violet is disappointed and feels she can't marry because she doesn't believe anyone has guessed the correct answer to this outrageous question. But she wants her father to pull some strings to make him marry her when he gets the answer wrong. The king hypocritically rejects her. An ogre forces his way into the tournament despite the guards. Violet is frightened and begs her father to drive the ugly creature out. The king, however, calmly invites him to participate in the tournament, as he is quite sure that no suitor will get it right. The ogre sniffs the huge skin and guesses it's a flea skin. After all, he lives in a filthy environment where fleas are the norm. The princess goes into a panic and rushes to the rooftop of the castle in tears. She would rather die than marry a man she didn't like, let alone an ugly ogre. The king catches up and apologizes to her, but says he can't take back his promise. As usual, he tries to force her into submission with the stereotypical arguments of fate and God's will. Violet denounces his deception and cruelty. She remembers that when she was a child, her father cared for her so much that he used to amuse her by imitating the sounds of animals. But now he is giving her away to a monster for the sake of his reputation. The sensible Violet finally chooses to respect the king's obligations. She walks slowly out of the castle, trembling, to the ogre's side. The ogre violently pulls her by the arm and leaves the castle. He leads Violet through the forest towards his home. 
The delicate princess, who has never walked so far before, fell to the ground in exhaustion. The ogre rudely tugs on her arm trying to pull her up, but failing. It reminds him of how he usually brings his prey home. So he lifts Violet's chin and taps him on the shoulder, signaling that he's going to carry her home. An ogre climbs a cliff face with a noble princess on his back. Suddenly he slips and Violet falls from his shoulders. He quickly releases his grip on the rock and tugs on her wrists. Ignoring Violet's cries, he pulls her upward. After a long and arduous trek, Violet is brought into a cave littered with bones. He plucks away a few skulls to clear a space and orders Violet to sit down. Violet runs away in fear and huddles in a corner. The ogre can't understand why the girl he loves doesn't do what he wants. He tears off a chunk of blood-soaked flesh to impress her, but is rebuffed. To take out his lust, he throws Violet down on the bed and forces himself on top of her. Violet's daily imprisonment with the monster makes her life a living hell. So many days of living like a savage have left her gaudy wedding dress dirty, torn, and her hair so greasy it's covered in fleas. That day, while the ogre is out hunting, Violet unexpectedly notices a lady on the other side of the cliff. She finds the courage to climb up the stone steps and cry out for help. The lady looks around but can't find anything to get Violet over the cliff. When she learns that the ogre who holds Violet captive is about to return, she gets worried and tries to leave. Violet screams desperately to stop her from leaving and begs for her help. The lady thinks twice and says she'll come tomorrow with her sons to save her. Violet, with a glimmer of hope, continues to lie next to the snoring ogre and pretends that nothing is wrong. Early the next morning, while ogre is handling the prey from the hunt, Violet sneaks out of the cave. She sees a boy waving at her from a distance. She runs over to him, grabs his hand, and slumps down on his shoulder. It turns out that the lady's family are acrobats, which allows him to cross between the two cliffs silently by means of a tightrope walk. The ogre, in the middle of cutting his meat, senses something is wrong, he hasn't heard Violet's voice in a long time. The ogre rushes out of the cave and sees that his beloved wife has been taken from him. Enraged, ogre grabs the rope and moves toward them with the strength of his powerful arms. Just as he is about to catch Violet, another of the lady's sons cuts the rope with a knife. The ogre cries out and falls off the cliff. After escaping the monster, Violet cries tears of joy and hugs the family who rescued her. She rides back to the castle in a carriage with the cheerful family. Their acrobatic performance puts Violet's pain behind her. However, the ogre suddenly reappears behind them. Not only has he just survived a fall, but now he's going to eliminate all obstacles to get his wife back. The two scrawny boys and their father are no match for the powerful monster. The three of them are killed by the ogre before they can even fight back. Violet, in a fit of terror, picks up a knife and jumps out of the wagon. The last boy escapes with his mother and Violet and hides behind a pallet of straw. The ogre soon follows the smell and catches up with him. The boy takes a swig of wine and sprays it into the torch. He tries to burn the ogre in this way, but he doesn't realize that the ogre is able to put out the fire by simply slapping his hands all over his body. An angry ogre chokes the boy. His mother comes forward and tries to save him but she too is strangled by the ogre. Terrified, Violet fights her way toward the valley. Unfortunately, the valley leads to a dead end. She has no way to escape but to crouch on the ground, gasping for breath. The ogre quickly located her, smelling her scent. He loses his mind and wants to strangle Violet, but he can't as he watches the girl he loves cry out in pain. Looking at his horribly burned face, Violet puts away her fear and tries to calm him down first. She places her hands on his body and slowly nestles her head against his chest in a gesture of submission. The ogre calms down and plans to take her back to his house with him. As usual, he taps his hand on his shoulder to signal Violet to grab on. Violet lays her left hand on his shoulder first, but all of a sudden she pulls out a knife and cuts his neck with a sharp blow. As the ogre falls to the ground in agony, she finally escapes the cage. It is only then that Violet realizes that she can never be saved by the help of others, and that if she wants to escape from the man's control, she must do it herself. So she does the one thing that will make the world bow down to her. On the other hand, the king is sick with the death of his flea and the departure of his daughter. His daily leech therapy is no cure for his mental illness. When the lady-in-waiting informs him that the princess is alive and has returned to the palace, he is instantly revitalized and runs down the hall. A blood-soaked violet shows the crowd her severed ogre's head. Here is the husband you chose for me. Seeing how much his once lovely daughter has suffered because of his irresponsibility, he kneels with the crowd and begs for her forgiveness, weeping with remorse. To make it up to Violet, the king abdicates and holds a coronation for her. Gone is the princess who longed for a man's love, who was dependent on her father and subservient to her husband, and in her place is a resolute, independent queen. She receives congratulations from the kings and royals of the other kingdoms, but can no longer return the favor to the kind family who rescued her. When an acrobat with a bamboo pole walks a tightrope over their heads, Violet bursts into a smile. 
she is both moved and relieved to be reminded of that family. This story is from an Italian movie called The Tale of Tales. Violet suffers a double dose of violence, being deeply hurt by the two men in her life who are supposed to be closest to her. Her father uses his power to force her to marry a savage monster, and her husband often assaults her body. From the ogre's several attempts to obey her, we can see that he actually likes her a little bit, but his rudeness and uncultivated nature make him incapable of communicating on an equal footing with the well-read and honorable princess. Since he has been brought up in a life full of killing and savagery, he is even more incapable of understanding the complexity of a woman's thoughts and emotions. After the horrible experience of a bad marriage, Violet finally learns to fight back. Unfortunately, her rebellion leads to the destruction of a good family. Luckily, she eventually wins, transforming herself from a subservient, spoiled princess into an independent, courageous queen. She no longer immerses herself in a romantic story full of illusions, no longer fantasizes about brave knights coming to rescue her from her predicament, and knows that the only way to be free is to rise up and fight back. Everything in the world is in balance. If you want to get something, you always have to give or lose first, just like the acrobat trying to balance on the tightrope at the end of the movie. This is Rainbow Movie. If there's a movie you'd like to watch, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Let's watch a movie together and experience something different. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.